U.S. presidential races hide the criminality of the U.S. empire. The thing I hate about Western electoral politics in general and U.S. presidential races in particular is that they take the focus off the depravity of the U.S. centralized empire itself and run cover for its criminality. In the coming months, you're going to be hearing a lot of talk about the two leading presidential candidates and how very, very different they are from each other and how one is clearly much, much worse than the other. But in reality, the very worst things about both of them will not be their differences. The worst things about them will be the countless ways in which they are both indistinguishably in lockstep with one another. Donald Trump is not going to end America's non-existent democracy if elected and rule the United States as an iron-fisted dictator. And he is certainly not going to be some kind of populist hero who leads a revolution against the deep state. He will govern as your standard evil Republican president, who is evil in all the usual ways U.S. presidents are evil, just like he did during his first term. His administration will continue to fill the world with more war machinery, implement more starvation sanctions, back covert operations, uprisings, and proxy conflicts, and work to subjugate the global population to the will of the empire, all while perpetuating the poisoning of the earth via ecocidal capitalism, just as all his predecessors have done. And the same will be true of whatever moronic fantasies Republicans wind up concocting about Kamala Harris between now and November. She's not going to institute communism or give everyone welfare, implement Sharia law, weaken Israel, take everyone's guns, subjugate Americans to the woke agenda and make everyone declare their pronouns and eat bugs or any of that fuzz-brained nonsense. She will continue to expand U.S. warmongering and tyranny while making the world a sicker, more violent, and more dangerous place for everyone, while funneling the wealth of the people and the planet into the bank accounts of the already obscenely rich. Just as Biden has spent his entire term doing, and just as Trump did before him. The truth is that while everyone's going to have their attention locked on the differences between Trump and Harris these next few months, by far the most significant and consequential things about each of these candidates are the ways in which they are similar. The policies and agendas either of them will roll out which will kill the most people, negatively impact the most lives, and do the most damage to the ecosystem are the areas in which they are in complete agreement not those relatively small and relatively inconsequential areas in which they differ. You can learn a lot more about the U.S. and its globe-spanning empire by looking at the similarities between presidential administrations than you can by looking at their differences, because that's where the overwhelming majority of the abusiveness can be found. But nobody's going to be watching any of that normalized criminality while the drama of this fake election plays out. More and more emotional hysteria is going to get invested in the outcome of this fraudulent two-handed sock puppet popularity contest between two loyal empire lackeys who are both sworn to advance the interests of the empire no matter which one wins. And the mundane day-to-day murderousness of the empire will continue to tick on unnoticed in the background. The other day, the U.S. Navy's highest-ranking officer just casually mentioned that the AUKUS military alliance, which is geared toward roping Australia into a future U.S.-driven military confrontation with China, will remain in place no matter who wins the presidential election. Regardless of who is in our political parties and whatever is happening in that space, it is allies and partners that are always our priority, said Admiral Lisa Franchetti in response to the completely baseless concern that Trump will withdraw from military alliances and make the U.S. isolationist if elected. How could Franchetti make such a confident assertion if the behavior of the U.S. war machine meaningfully changed from administration to administration? The answer is that she couldn't, and it doesn't. The official elected government of the United States may change every few years, but its real government does not. To be clear, I am not telling you not to vote here. These elections are designed to function as an emotional pacifier for the American people to let them feel like they have some control over their government, 
So if you feel like you want to vote, then vote in whatever way pacifies your emotions. I've got nothing invested in convincing you either way. Whenever I talk about this stuff, I get people accusing me of being defeatist and interpreting this message as a position that there's nothing anyone can do. But that's not true at all. I'm just saying the fake election ritual you've been given by the powerful and told that's how you solve your problems is not the tool for the job. You're as likely to solve your problems by voting as you are by wishing or by praying. But that doesn't mean problems can't be solved. If you thought you could cure an infection by huffing paint thinner, I'd tell you that won't work either, and tell you to go see a doctor instead. Just because the only viable candidates in any U.S. presidential race will always be murderous empire lackeys doesn't mean things are hopeless. That's just what it looks like when you live in the heart of an empire that's held together by lies, violence, and tyranny, whose behavior has too much riding on it for the powerful to allow it to be left to the will of the electorate. Your vote won't make any difference to the behavior of the empire, but what can make a difference is taking actions every day to help pave the way toward a genuine people's uprising against the empire later on down the road. You do this by opening people's eyes to the reality that what they've been taught about their government, their nation, and their world is a lie, and that the mainstream sources they've been trained to look to for information are cleverly disguised imperial propaganda services. What we can all do as individuals, right here and now, is begin cultivating a habit of committing small acts of sedition. Making little paper cuts in the flesh of the beast, which add up over time. You can't stop the machine by yourself, but you can sure as hell throw sand in its gears. Giving a receptive listener some information about what's going on in the world. Creating dissident media online. Graffiti with a powerful message, amplifying an inconvenient voice, sharing a disruptive idea, supporting an unauthorized cause, organizing toward forbidden ends, distributing eye-opening literature, creating eye-opening literature, creating eye-opening art, having authentic conversations about real things with anyone who can hear you. Every day there's something you can do. After you start pointing your creativity at cultivating this habit, you'll surprise yourself with the innovative ideas you come up with. Even a well-placed meme or tweet can open a bunch of eyes to a reality they'd previously been closed to. Remember, they wouldn't be working so frantically to restrict online speech if it didn't pose a genuine threat to the empire. Such regular, small acts of sabotage do infinitely more damage to the imperial machine than voting, talking about voting, or thinking about voting, which is why voting, talking about voting, and thinking about voting is all you're ever encouraged to do. The more people wake up to the fact that they are running to nowhere on a hamster wheel built by the powerful for the benefit of the powerful, the more people there will be to step off the wheel and start pushing for real change in real ways that matter and the more people there will be to help wake up everyone else. Once enough eyes are open, the people will be able to use the power of their numbers to force real change and shrug off the chains of their abusers like a heavy coat on a warm day. There is nothing that could stop us once enough of us understand what's happening. That's why so much effort goes into obfuscating people's understanding and keeping everyone endlessly diverted with empty nonsense like presidential elections.